is is that is that Vance calling? I believe it is. Hold on. Hello, Vinny, baby, how you doing? The podcast. You like it? You don't like it. He doesn't like it. Why doesn't he like it? We're ripping you off. We're ripping him off. We're not ripping him off. We're original. You want us to be what? He says we got to stick with the original stuff. What, what What does he want us to say? I, I, he said do our intro. All right, Vinny. Hey, no problem. We got this. All right. We are the sweet music between your ears. The voice that grinds your gears. I am the legend of the bluegrass who loves kicking ass. I am the whiskey drinking, hell raising Hoosier heavyweight. And we are the, the main, main event. event. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode three of the Main Event Podcast. Tonight we have a special podcast. We have a special guest. It is the beer slinging, bar brawling Matt Watson. Matt, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good, actually. Um, um, I'm from actually from Henderson, where me and Evan are both from there. Mm-hmm. And uh, just bartend, serve, going on a medical career, and pretty much a beer snob, if there's ever been one. There you go, folks. So now you have a general idea of what we got going on. As we talked about last episode, we're going to uh, start our beer review from the get-go. And the main reason why we had Matt on here is because he's such a beer snob, if you will, that he brought a little something special down to us that, uh, as always, Evan, we're going to pop first. We are, we are. Matt, I actually want you, man, since you are our guest today, tell us a little bit about what you've got here for us. All right, um, I have Bell's Hop Slam. It's a Imperial Double IPA from Bell's up in Michigan, and um, it's actually brewed with honey, which there's not too many like that out there. It's uh, supposed to really mellow it out, and it's got a lot of dry hops, a lot of citra hops. It's it's going to be a good one. I'm I'm pretty excited to have these guys try it. Now, for our fans that are out there that are getting into the craft beer kind of style, or especially someone who's easing into the IPAs, before we ever taste it, is that something you would suggest to them? You say, hey, wait, try something else, and work your way, get your palate towards that down the road. This is, uh, it's definitely a palate shredder for people who normally drink domestics. Uh, it, it is it is bitter, it's 10% alcohol, it is a little boozy. But There, there we go, kids. That's what we're looking for. We're looking to have three beers and go to sleep. If I, if I have 10, though, then I can be at 100% alcohol. Which is my goal in life, so I might have 10 of these. I believe you'd die well before then. No. My blood is nearly 5% IPA as it is. So. Exactly. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's crack these bad boys open, um, and uh, we'll give our first take. Get a little, first, uh, yeah, a little sniffer in. I like the smell of it. That's yeah, it's not too crazy. Mm. Ooh. That is completely different. That is not what I was expecting at all. No. That's pretty fucking good. I get the honey. The honey is right there. Like you get that the is honey. Forefront. Oh, oh honey. man, the the honey finish is just. It, I'll tell you what. I'm surprised it's not near as hoppy as I want to say what I figured it would be. I mean, with a name like Hop Slam, oh, yeah, that's I was expecting like, to get punched right in the face. Yeah, and it's just kind of like, yeah. Like, but the hops are there. It's just the honey covers it up yeah. so well, and you get you get that bitter, the first bitterness, and then. The honey just glides you into just freaking heaven, man. Well, now, now I, I'm a little bit tainted here at the second because I was drinking. I've been drinking a couple IPAs this evening before we got here. So I've already kind of got that taste in my mouth. So I'm, mine's maybe a little obscured, Evan. You give a little bit better no, indication. No, so definitely the hops are there. Got like a slight little slight citrus flavor to it. The thing that gets me, though, is the honey. Like... I think I could go on all day about that because that finish is smooth and it reminds me of those. Uh, you remember like those cream candies that have that little honey mm-hmm, center to them? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like hitting that at the very end, like when you first hit that center. 
That is awesome. I love when I first hit the center. Well, I usually know. try to do it in the first stroke. But occasionally you catch the inner thigh and then things just go completely awry. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but you're pretty much doubled over in pain, cursing whatever God you believe in. Or and, all of them. And don't forget, you can give her about three hop slams and she'll be there already. Uh, I, that's what we're looking for. So all in all, uh, first taste, I'm going to say uh, I'm a fan. Now, is this hard to get a hold of, Matt? It only comes out once a year, and normally liquor stores get about two six-packs. Oh, so there you go, folks. This is impossible to get a hold of. By the time so. you're listening to this, it is long gone. So for those of you that didn't get to, listen to, or didn't get to drink it, fuck you. We got it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that being said, I have a little bit of an interesting story. Uh, I met a guy at work this week, and he's a another beer snob, if you will, a huge craft beer guy. Mm-hmm. And he does the, uh, the buying and trading with people all across the country. Which, if you don't know, is an actual thing. They have apps out, like Untapped and different things of that nature, where people will buy a six-pack, and they will trade with other people online and send them back and forth because, again, like a beer like this, if you buy this, you now have uh, equity, if you will, in being able yes. to trade for other rare beers. So that was kind of neat. I don't know if me and Evan will ever get that deep into it. What but, do you uh, mean we won't get into that? That uh, will happen. That's I'm going to quit my job no, one day no. and just trade beer. <laughs> I'm not, I, you heard not it here sure first. I <laughs> told you guys uh, how, how much this stuff actually costs. <laughs> oh, 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 please do tell. Um, <clears throat> The, the cheapest you can get it in is in Michigan for sixteen ninety nine a six-pack at Bell's. Mm-hmm. But um, anywhere else, it's going to be nineteen ninety nine or twenty ninety nine for six of them. <laughs> for six beers, it's for $20. Six, listen, yes. listen, now, if you go out to eat, you know you ain't drinking six beers for 20 bucks. Yes, but what if you bought one of these at a restaurant? It'd, It'd probably be 20 be bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost $4 a beer. Look at you with your quick math and things. Well, I did go to the <laughs> University of Kentucky, so I didn't graduate. I can play ball like a motherfucker, but that's about all I got. I don't know if that statement's true. Me and Evan have been friends for quite a while. I've yet to see him dribble a basketball, so that's later to be talked about. You come you come find me on a basketball court on February 24th, I'll be there. <laughs> don't, some, I, don't ask me why I picked that day. <laughs> it puts some respect on my name. Oh, shit. So, all right, guys. The big reason why we're here, we have Matt on, is, again, he talked about, the, you know, being a uh, big beer guy. You currently bartend where in Henderson? It's at uh, Fire Dome, like a local family pizza joint. Okay, so if you're local, you're in the Henderson area, you're looking for some pizza, hit it up, find Matt, have him serve you a beer, and tip the bastard. Um, and then you also work at a unique place that's a liquor store. What's that called? It's uh, it's Beverage Barn in Henderson, and we have like a, it's a craft beer bar. We have eight taps. We rotate. Um, I'm actually the one that helps pick out the beer, and I clean the lines. And um, see, this is why we make friends with these people. All right. <laughs> now, yeah. here, I'm even going to cut you off because this is what got me really giddy and excited earlier. Me and Matt were talking about the Beverage Barn, and he started talking about the bourbons that they have. And I've spoke briefly about this on prior podcasts. Um, in, in my scotch and bourbon connoisseur-ish where I'm in the low level of being able to spend money because that shit's super expensive. But you have stuff like Pappy Van Winkle that's on there that you can buy a shot. What, what, what'd that go for, Matt? What was a shot of Pappy going for? A uh, shot of 23 Pappy is 50 and the 15 is 30 that, That's $50, folks. So just it's don't let that number pesos. fool you. <laughs> not pesos. It's not like three fifty. It's not what I'm going to use in the Philippines. It's not it at all. A shot, <laughs> because it's twenty-three year old. Bourbon. It's special stuff, though. There's oh, only absolutely. there's only like fifty-two hundred to five thousand five hundred bottles produced in Kentucky, only in Kentucky, every single year. See, that's that's outstanding. That's fantastic. And I know when I get some extra scratch, uh, I'm gonna go have a fifty-dollar shot and <laughs> start saving up now. Exactly. <laughs> I'm about when we get when we get paid Friday. I'm about to just roll up in beverage barn and just and ball for twenty minutes. Yeah. Daddy, why didn't I have dinner tonight? It's because I had a fifty shot dollar pack of twenty three. That's why that shit was delicious. Uh, You'll understand one day, son. So uh, we wanted to bring Matt on here just to talk beer for a little bit. Um, you know that's why he's a special guest. Obviously, a uh, a good friend of. 
young master Evan Wells over here to my left Indeed. and uh, to try something a little bit different, which we're going to occasionally do on the podcast. Um, I'm slowly but surely lining up guests, so is Evan, to bring in a different aspect because as much as me and him can sit here and talk sports, talk wrestling for an hour and a half, it's good to have that outside point of view. Matt is a semi-wrestling fan, I would say. You knew what you were talking about yeah. while we were watching the Rumble, which I'm extremely disappointed in. We'll get to there. that later. <laughs> uh, it, it'll, it'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe another hop slam. You know, I'll feel better <laughs> get about Get slammed myself. in the hop. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk. Yeah. But, uh, so, Matt, you started off, what was initially your first craft beer that got you kind of in the in the mode of wanting to drink it? Um, my first craft beer was actually Fat Tire. Mm-hmm. And this was uh, probably three, four years ago. Um, okay. My cousin bought it for me because I was not 21 at that time. But uh, that, that <clears throat> no, it's, it's, no, you were definitely, yeah, no, you're good. No, I was <laughs> extremely 21. Was, I mean, there there's a gray area on whether or not you can have beer before you're 21. Th- well, this is Kentucky. We do it, not condone underage drinking, however... If you huh. do, make sure you drink good stuff. Um, so I, I the past is the past. The past is the past. Can't take it back. Exactly. So I had Fat Tire, and um, what I liked about it is there was there was actual flavor, and mm. with domestics, I had to learn to like it, and I had to learn to just like get over the fact that it was just like a boozy, heavy lager that just you know got me drunk. You know? So we'll break this down real quick uh, for everybody who may not be big on this. When we talk domestics, we mean your Budweiser, Bud Light, MGD, Coors Light, Coors Light, Bush, you know, Light. Bush Light, along those. If it's made by Anheuser Busch, it, it's a domestic beer, and they pretty much have the market on most of that stuff. However, Milwaukee's best, oh, Milwaukee's is, worst, is, is a craft yeah, say, beer in its own. If Milwaukee's that's the best. worst, I don't want to see the worst. <laughs> but needless to say, that's what we're talking about domestics. If you can walk into any gas station, Seven Eleven, and pick up a six pack of it, it's probably domestic. Um, Do they even it, have craft beers and gas stations? I have. Well, no, not Some really. Times, yeah. So when I was a station in North Carolina in Jacksonville. Um, the gas stations there were a hell of a lot better than they are here because they would have like beer coolers, walk-in beer coolers, and it had everything. And you could buy craft beer there on occasion. Now, me and Matt were talking earlier, obviously off mic, about New Belgium, which is the company that makes Fat Tire. And uh, we almost regard it now as not really a craft beer. But it's a good starting place. Oh, absolutely. It really is. Uh, If you're looking to get into craft beer... It, it, um, it's a different swing from the domestic. I, it is. There's more flavor. It's it's a good way to get yourself into it if you're looking to do it. If you're not, enjoy Bud Light all you want. Yeah. yeah we're, we're not hating on it. It's just... I'm, the, I'm the, hating on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 I hate on it sometimes, too. It's good for beer pong and, and, and yard work. It's a yard work beer. It's yeah. domestics. That's what I call them. Or the, you know, couple days before paycheck. <laughs> if you just had a rough one and you're just, you're just looking to... Because, I mean, you can buy a 30-pack of Bud Light for the same price as a six-pack of Hop Slam. Yeah. And you can get wasted twice. I can't get over this. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you how much it was. I, feel, well, well, I hey, almost feel bad. The main event, nonetheless, feels... Uh, gratitude towards Matt spending his hard-working money while he's putting himself through med school to buy his really expensive beer and come on the podcast. So, uh, one up for that, brother. So, you started off with Fat Tire, mm-hmm. and then you, you kind of got the flavor and the, the know-all about it. Where'd you go from there, man? I went to uh, Sierra Nevada, has a pale ale. Great mm-hmm. pale ale, too. It, it is pretty solid. I went to that, and there was something about the bitterness that was different. It was just... Cause my cousins raved about it. That's all they talked about was like, it's like, oh yeah, this is so solid. It's just, it's just a good beer. And I wondered why, you know. I, and uh, eventually, after having, um, I don't know, probably twenty of them, just <laughs> over the over the course of six or eight months, I just I started wanting to taste that hoppiness, and I started tasting different beers, and it's just been a snowball. There you go. Since then, I'm head over heels for hops and. I, and Evan, we've talked about this on the podcast about starting off with maybe a, an ale or, or an a amber. stout yeah, or an amber, getting into that mode and then switching to the IPAs because once you get that palate for an IPA, it just, it, 
it, it does not have any drugs in it, folks, but you almost get, you do. I agree with Matt. You get that, that want, you know, it's like, man, I really feel like <sighs> I, I want an IPA. Like you get that hot flavor. You just want to pull from it. Yeah. I actually don't know the name, but there is a chemical that is in uh, hops that's in marijuana. They're actually in the same family. Damn it. Now we're dealing drugs, Matt. Yes. <laughs> uh, I like this. I mean, <laughs> I mean, No. They're okay, no, uh, there's a chemical in both of them that it actually relaxes you, naturally. And so really hoppy beers can actually have sort of a, more of a relaxing effect than alcohol. So oh so you're saying like just as IPAs or just hops in general? Um, hops, in the IPAs, you'll get a better result, I mean. So it's just kind of a prevalent thing, just like, you, you have hops in beer, obviously. But yeah, in nearly every single beer right. that exists. But in IPAs, you're just saying it's more prevalent just because... Yeah, you can drink a couple hops. and feel more relaxed than just the same amount of booze would do to you. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, a good couple of drinks of something like that Basil Hayden sitting back here on that table, which is a good bourbon, will get me relaxed real quick. But I agree with you, I do enjoy an IPA over other stuff by far. But I have to say too, like I'm just I'm seriously I'm flabbergasted right now because Hop Slam might be one of my favorite IPAs that I've had now. It, and like, for it to be a double. It blows my mind because I've had double IPAs at six percent that are not as smooth. So Yeah, exactly. And the thing too is that I expect a double IPA to be ultra hoppy and to almost kill me sometimes mm-hmm. with the hops that with the flavor that you get mm. but it's just so smooth and that honey finish like it's a it's amazing it's, like it's great if you no. can go get this beer right now if anyone happens to listen after i drop this podcast please go do it now now question though matt what makes it just for our fans what makes it a double ipa a double ipa has to do with the ratio of hops to the ale character so mm. And it also pretty much has to do with IBUs. So even with the honey, this is actually sitting at about 70 IBUs, where double IPAs can get up to like 100 or 110, and triple IPAs can get up to, you know, 120, 125, something that's really bitter and just like take, okay, go out front, get some pine needles, (laughs) and just eat them. (laughs) And just eat them. And then take a shot of mango juice. That's going to be your triple IPAs. Uh, a triple you have, IPA? Yeah, don't. You, man. you have to really, really, really. Bell's actually makes a, uh, it's, it's a red triple. But uh, it's. it's. And I could probably get down on it with being a red. Uh, you know, that way I think I could probably pull it. It's so, a red, but, yeah. you know, the IBUs are yeah. 110, 115, and it's... So, I will say this also about this beer. Are there going to be pine needles in this beer when I drink it? That's <laughs> no, what I no, want to no. know. I think they filter them out. Yeah. They filter... But, you know, it, like, when it's in a big mash press like that, and it doesn't get filtered, like, shit happens, you know? Maybe. I don't... So, we'll check our cans after, don't worry. <laughs> but, but seriously, with the Hop Slam, though, like, it doesn't drink like a beer drinks. Like, it... I I bold to say it drinks like a soda drinks like I just it wanna, drinks like a soda yeah I just want the freaking, finish is soda smooth like I I feel yeah exactly that's per perfect analogy Matt I just so want to be like soda. slam it and fling it behind me and be like well, that's my problem so like I'm almost has to do done with the with fact this. you want to just shotgun the thing yeah I could yeah like I could shotgun this like it's, it's phenomenal that smooth I can drink this every day of my life which is no alcohol in which it. is yeah. also extremely scary that it is <laughs> that smooth. Uh, <laughs> That being said, great beer. Um, now, Matt, do you get into stouts or lagers or anything like that at all? How heavy do you usually go? Oh, oh goodness. Um, and we're not talking about women. We're just we're saying right. straight up just, uh, just, just probably like 210, 220. <laughs> fair, fair enough. He gets to the 200 club. My man. Two, uh, um, uh, yeah. Hold on, I'm going to cut you off right there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was in the Marine Corps, we called that whaling. <laughs> and you, when you were with the trifecta that you have right now between the three of us, and if we were all three uh, single young stags out on the uh, out on the prowl, well, have, it was... Which it was, I'm single, uh, by the way. We have Sam. two single young yeah. stags. I am happily... Stags. Oh, Evan is too. I, oh, I am happily married. Um, but if we go out on the prowl... It, and it got to a certain point in the night where we realized nothing was going on. Then it was who could pull the biggest woman. Now, <laughs> I luckily won 
was either always with a woman at the time, so I never had to worry about it, or I just didn't drop my standards that fucking low. But I have seen some horrendous, horrendous things happen where I'm like, there's not enough alcohol in the world to get me to that point where I would just be like, <laughs> slap an ass and watch the wave ride into oblivion. <laughs> no. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but that being said, stouts, loggers, go, Matt. Um, I actually drink pretty much any beer that is out there. Oh, I like it. My man. Um, <laughs> if it's free. If it's not, as long as it's not a domestic, because I really never choose to drink domestics. So um, if it's Russian Imperial, Imperial Stout, Stout, Milk Stout, Sour, anything. It ju- just hit me. So I'm going to ask you because you've had so many. Have you ever had a traditional English beer? Because I've heard that they are different compared to what we have. Um, English beer normally has more malt, mm-hmm. and they're generally they're more it's cloudy, the, right? Yeah, they're they're more towards the brown ale side. So a lot of the malted barley. So malted barley is kind of like that that sweet bitterness, and what makes beer dark is usually malt. Yeah, because I've never had an English. I've heard them. I've heard uh, Stone Cold talk you about. You ever heard it. Newcastle? Mm. I have, but which I, that's that's the style. I mean, that's yeah, not true. Is it really? English. Yeah, I was gonna say. I feel like that's just more. I feel that's domestic as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Newcastle is a very very sweet beer. It's good, mm-hmm. but it's one of those like I, I the first time I had it, uh, me and Jen were together, and I forget where I, I had it at, and I said this is a dessert beer because that's what I felt like. And it was like, oh, we're having dessert. Get a Newcastle because it was cinnamon and sugar and just it was like eating. You know, it's like taking a big swig of French toast beer almost. Well, since you, know. you since you've brought that up at the end of the show, I have something for all three of us for you all to try. Uh, that sweet tooth mat I was telling you about yesterday. Oh man! Um, I brought it with me, and I'll I'll dive into it once we actually uh, once we actually get to the end of the show. That's but, a double beer review. That's the first time ever. Yeah, it'll be it'll be at the end. Setting records, folks. We're doing big things around this motherfucker. If I had a podcast in my life, my life would just be a beer review. Because I drank so much beer. Matt, you keep on talking. You might be a part of this podcast. <laughs> this might be an every Sunday thing. You never know. But I do I do have to ask you something because you're so fluent with, with uh, beers. Hold on. Okay. We could do the three bird war- rule. We, we could bring him into the tag team and do the three bird rule if we had to. We've got to get him a title belt. Oh well, I mean that's yeah, I mean that duh. But I mean, we'll, we we will have to get him a title belt if that you know happens. the free free birds. Hey, well, yeah. I didn't throw Ooh. Brock Brock Lesnar out of the ring tonight, right, so right, I don't know if I get a title right, belt. Listen, I mean, not everybody can be as manly as we are, but <laughs> we'll, we'll rub takes, off on you in time. It takes practice. You now, can, what were you saying, brother? You, you can get I cut there. You off. No, you're good. But so I'm gonna say just do a little word association. And I want you to stick with stouts when I say this. Okay. Um, any style of stout, but I'm going to say a, a brand or a name brand of a craft beer and tell me the first stout that comes to your mind. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. Founders. Mm, Kentucky Breakfast Stout. Oh, thank God. <laughs> That's his favorite. That's my favorite. Favorite stout, it is. It is unbelievable. Yes, it, it is. It is unbelievable. Double chocolate. Yes. And I don't, I don't even like chocolate. But somehow, when you mix it with a beer and the malt and the bourbon barrel, I'll tell you what, I'm my not, lord, I'm not even one of these pussies in the world. I'm offended. How the fuck do you not like chocolate? <laughs> I <laughs> have listen. Well, I liked him up until this point right now. <laughs> oh, and this son bitch goes, I'm like, God damn. I mean, you might as well just spit on me. I Chocolate's have, delicious. I don't care if it's milk chocolate, dark chocolate. Look, like he, dark he chocolate didn't say there. he doesn't like apple pie. He's still an American. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll give you that. I have Say never, something about apple pie and I'll fucking RKO you. <laughs> <laughs> I have never liked chocolate. God. I don't you know why. you abused as a child? Like, I, I, don't, wish, I, don't. I liked it because I can't hardly eat dessert at a restaurant because yeah, so all of it's chocolate. Good. Fans, but like, I do not <laughs> like the taste of chocolate. People, we need Matt needs help. We need to give him suggestions. Yes, I need a psychiatrist. <laughs> Any psychiatrist out there? Yeah. My number is. <laughs> no, 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 but back to the stouts, man. I'm glad that you like that. That's one of my favorite stouts. The double chocolate flavor is excellent. Um, I have had several different stouts in my time. Coming from 
when I first started drinking craft beer, I was lucky enough. I didn't start early like someone did over here. Illegal. Not, not me. Not but, me. <laughs> I, I was 21. <laughs> yeah, he was 21. Sure. Or so. <laughs> Something like that. But I uh, actually started out on Stouts. Um, and Founders was like the second or third one that I had tried. And You're a lucky man. Yeah. Well, see, whenever I started drinking beer when I was 21... Um, I was around guys at the time that were into craft beer, and they were they were legit beer snobs. Like, we talk about beer, and we'll try just about anything once. But these guys were like, oh, no, you can't have, like, this brand or this brand, because they were legit snobs about it. But they were big on founders, and I had the opportunity to try that breakfast out, and I loved it. And see, one of the first things, and I talked to you briefly about it, my buddy Scott Potter... <laughs> Just re-enlisted for, hell, I don't know, third or fourth time in the Marine Corps. Staff Sergeant, currently in Japan. Hurrah. There you go, Scott. Hit you up, brother. Uh, he's the one that turned me on the craft beer years ago. And we were talking about New Belgium. I walked into and what became my favorite for a long time until I started really up in my game was 1554, and it was a black lager. Mm -hmm. And because of the chocolate and the coffee notes that I got with it, and I paired it with steak, and it just seemed yeah. to go so damn good, that, and me and Evan have talked about this in, in other podcasts, if you're going to start off with craft beer, I almost feel it needs to be dark lager and stouts to ease you into things. It's the, the black lagers and the stouts are, it's such a different style of drink than lagers, just because, it's normally malty, coffee, there's a lot of flavor, so there's something you can appreciate about one of them. I mm -hmm. mean, in, in the whole world you can. You can find something like um, the Imperial Stout that Founders makes is excellent. I had one actually today before I came here, now that I think about it. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a good starting place. Just, I mean, find any stout. If you hate it, try another one. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong, really, with beer. There's got there's got to be a beer that everyone likes in the world. That's the enjoyable thing about craft beer is that even if you don't like a specific style, like say you hate stouts or you hate Belgian wheats, you might like IPAs, you might like Imperial Reds. There are so mm -hmm. many that you can just literally go down the line and taste test everything till you find something you like and something mm -hmm. you enjoy. There's... There's Belgian IPAs, there's IPAs, there's double IPAs, there's triple IPAs, there's just Belgian wheats, there's all kinds of stuff. There's stuff for everyone. No. Yeah, that's what's, again, that's what's nice about craft beer. I, I truly like, there are people that have never had craft beer before, but once you get them into that scene, like our buddy Chris... Um, slowly, when, slowly when getting you, him rolled when you, into when you My get friends him, as well, shout yeah. out to Zach Sony. Absolutely. Getting them there. When you get them into that scene, all of a sudden it becomes a thing to where you just start you start taste testing different things or you'll be you'll be at, at Beverage Barn at any liquor store and you'll be looking around and like, Well, I can get this Budweiser or you know, this Bud Light that I've had for eons and then it's like, Well, or I can go just like what I did with Space Station Middle Finger and look at the art on one of the fucking six packs and I'm go, like, that oh, looks hardcore yeah, shit. It's Let's a take that. Or it's an IPA. I like that company. I'm trying it. Absolutely. There's yeah. something about a middle finger on anything that makes it more appealing. It's Absolutely. true. If I could, if I could like make my own beer can, it would just have a giant middle finger. <laughs> right? Like if you were, when you pop open the can, it's the middle finger and it just rises up. Like yeah. that's what I would want. But. Yeah, I mean, you can you just can't go wrong. There's a craft beer for everybody and if you don't think that then you're a liar. There's just you haven't had the right one. You haven't exactly. Had, exactly. It's like finding finding true love in your life. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. I, it's true. I found true love. I found true love uh, I found about a, two weeks ago. I found it's it. It's called <laughs> Hop Slam by Bills. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It's like this is my new love. <laughs> Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, there you go. She's got that honey taste at the end. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it tastes like honey. Ooh. Hey, girl. So, which there's hey. even uh, there's even local breweries in Evansville, and even if you live in Henderson or Owensboro, there's uh, Tin Man and Carson's. They, I mean, both of them make pretty solid beer all around, and um, in we're that actually. Tin Man is changing the game. I think they right. uh, they've had some solid beers. They're sours recently. Yes. They're sours because they have a rhubarb sour mm -hmm. 
that is incredible. And it tastes nothing like rhubarb, and it makes no sense. I don't even understand why they call it a rhubarb sour, but it's it's awesome. I've had people that I've had people that freaking hate beer that's not domestic, like the rhubarb sour. I have a I have a buddy. His name is uh, Trevor Keelan, who went to UK with me. Who still lives in Lexington. And he comes down to visit his parents usually twice a year. And I took him out to eat a Tin Man um, over mm-hmm. Christmas this week. Or, not, fuck, not this week. During Christmas. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> some Pop pe- Slam's getting to you. Well, it's a 10% alcohol, you know. Um, but no, I, I took Trevor there. And he's like, well, I want to try. They have that apricot sour that they've always had there, the mm-hmm. Domacine. Domacine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't, he's not a big fan of beer at all. But I bought that for him, and he loved it. So they have those growlers there on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. They're like the five dollar Phillips. Yes. So I bought him a growler of that, and he's hooked. Like Trevor goes out now, and all he drinks is sours, which is fine. That's the craft beer that he is into. Mm-hmm. But I'll he has just, somewhere to go from there he, too. He does, and he'll text me like every other day, be like, "Bro, you need to try this sour, or try that one, or go to the beverage barn and get this." And mm-hmm. and see, that's not even like. It's not my bag, baby. To take a, take a little bit from Austin Power. Uh, I've had a couple sours, and for me, like I, they make at, my stomach hurt. Yes, yeah, like they, they. I like sour stuff. Like I like mm-hmm. sour candy. I don't want to drink something that is, you know, lemonade has that tartness, but it also has that sweet. Yeah, it, it's the same way as when you drink a shandy. I think mm-hmm. shandies are nasty. So for the the fans out there, like. Uh, uh, Lynn and Google does lemon shandies and all these different shandies. It's kind of like lemonade and beer is the best way to explain it. And they put it together, and I think they're absolutely horrendous. Um, but I'm sure there's a ton of people out there that absolutely love them, and that's good. Do you? Sours are actually really acidic because of the – whenever they make the ales, they put a lot of wheat, and there's a natural bacteria that occurs when they age it called lactobacillus. And that makes it literally acidic and literally sour. That's why it's sour because of the bacteria ages it somehow. I, I don't actually understand the entire process. And this is why we have this motherfucker on the podcast. Because <laughs> me and Evan would go, well, it's just how they fucking brew it. It's goddamn sour. It's just, <laughs> it's fucking, it's fucking tart as a motherfucker. Have you ever, have you ever had a fucking apricot before? <laughs> well, there you go. That shit's sour. It's what it tastes like. Uh, yeah. yeah, but the rhubarb sour doesn't make any sense. No. Doesn't I, that make any sense? Do they still have it right now? Yeah. Yeah, we have it at Beverage Barn in Henderson. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, we have it in four packs. I will. Are you trying to do a shameless I believe plug it's a, right there? I believe, <laughs> I, believe I, believe that, I believe that was a shameless plug. So, no, I like it. It's fine. I love it. <laughs> so I'm sure still we're going to we're gonna get back to this. We've obviously knocked out the first 30 one and a half minutes or so uh, uh, on craft beer. Zach, it's our podcast. We can talk about beer as long as we want. Mother lover, I know this. Mother lover, uh, I, I'm just saying. Are you are you Christian now? Uh, Is that it? No, absolutely fucking not. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was, but it's, damn it. See, here we go again. Uh, you you fucking fuck. Why are right? you Why are Listen, you getting into stop, politics? Stop, you should just stop, talk stop, about yeah. beer. All right, so drink your feelings. <laughs> word, um, the main event. We're getting into first. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and jump in the meat and potatoes of what is always the podcast, and we're gonna start off with next takeover. It was San Antonio, right? It was the same yes, place. Yes, it yeah. was in San Antonio. So we had a bunch of different matchups, and as always, I feel like the takeovers that are done by next are just top tier, and I feel like at this point, because I don't know anyone else behind the scenes, Triple H. I gotta take my hat off to him. He's doing great things down there, and what I would—I don't want to say minor leagues because these guys aren't minor leagues. But in the, I mean, Ty Dillinger was in the Royal Rumble. Yeah, but you know, and, yep. and so was freaking Apollo Cruz, who was in next last year, and Baron Corbin, who was in next last year. So let's—they kind of deserve it. Though. Yeah, yeah. So you know, the the next level down, I always feel they do a good pay per view. That every few months that they do it. Now, we started off with Ty Dillinger versus pretty much all of Sanity. And Eric Young got the win. Yep. Controversial, at least, um, because you had... Uh, they nicknamed the, the the fucking big guy. They gave him a different name. I didn't catch it. Um, I didn't catch it either. 
because they were calling him fucking Shamu or Moodoo or fuck. I don't know. He's a Sham- big. <laughs> hey, listen. He's a big fat fuck, he, and who's Harry? The, the resurrected carcass of <laughs> Shamu <laughs> from Sea World. Yeah, he's a goddamn whale. He's still ferocious as hell. And then the. Uh, you know, uh, Shamu's not ferocious. He was I a don't killer know. whale, motherfucker. Yeah, but he was in fucking SeaWorld. What the fuck was he killing? Well, I, I bet he got a trainer or two in his time. But um, right. Needless to say, that That'd match went on. Rad. I'd like to see that, yeah. actually. Yeah. You're horrible. Uh, <laughs> I'm a deplorable uh, human being. Uh, but um, uh. So, needless to say, Sanity walked through. Eric Young got the win and a hard fought match by Ty Dillinger. It was a decent match. It had what would be normal. Then we went to, um, well, initially it was the tag match, yeah, which was really stuck of, out in my head. Authors of Pain versus uh, DIY. Yeah, DIY. You had uh, Gargano and Ciampa. Um, and that was an actually really, really solid match all around. Now, I bitched about it before. I will say it again. They are holding the Authors of Pain back from being as athletic as they can be. Like, I feel like they're just telling the guys to kind of like slow down their movements and almost wade around, waddle around, because they're two extremely large men. I mean, they're both pushing 300 pounds or close to it, but it's muscle. Like, it's shoulders, freaking traps. Like, you can see them. They're fucking stout dudes. They look like NFL linemen is what they look like. And they can move. You see it in spurts, but they really pull them back at times. Anyways. Well, and the thing is, is the thing that sticks out is when they run, it looks like they have shit inside of their pants. And like <laughs> they're, like, it's almost we, a waddle. We've, uh, we've all done it. We were all babies at one point in time. But like it's like you shit in your pants and you're trying to like run and you do that little hobble step <laughs> kind of deal, like wide legs, kind of bow legged kind of deal, and that's what it looks like. And these dudes, again, like they're fit, they're not mm. fucking around. They might be big motherfuckers, but I guarantee fucking tea if you got them down yeah. in a three point stance and had them come <laughs> oh, after dude, you, that's, they'd kill you. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, they, you get it yeah. demolished. I, I guarantee they're they're ultra beasts in the gym. And the one thing I like about that tag team, not only is it done up by Paul Ellering, who was, uh, he's a WWE Hall of Famer for his time managing the Legion of Doom, Hulk and Animal, but the fact that they have great tag team moves together. They do that dual power bomb where they literally pick both individuals up, they smash them together over top of their heads, and then one guy drops them and the other guy drops them. And just the visual effect that it gives... Because Tommaso and Ciampa aren't big dudes by any means. I mean, they're they're average height and weight. They're in impeccable shape. Abs, you know, they look great. There but is, they're not big guys. They're like a solid 200. Yeah, 200. Ciamp, Ciampa's probably a little heavier. He, he might be pushing 215, but they're not big boys. No. So you put in a guy who's got 70 pounds on you, and he's flinging you around like a fucking rag doll. <laughs> Needless to say, it's impressive. And then I forget the bookend or the last chapter. That's yes, what it's called. The last chapter. Last chapter, which is a great finishing maneuver. You got to look it up. Which I feel every tag team should have a dual finishing maneuver. Which DIY does. They do a dual head kick on a guy, which we've talked about before, is fucking just disgusting. And the fact that I don't know how they can even pull it off without actually hurting. The guy that is receiving the maneuver. No, there's because no way. it is literally one guy <laughs> kicking the dude in the lower jaw and one guy kicking him in the upper head at the same fucking time. It's it's literally you could snap someone's neck like they just Matt, buckle. You, Matt, you ever remember? Did you ever see Hot Shots with Charlie Sheen? Like there's just the ridiculousness. Yes, yes. and like absolutely, the, the, it, it reminds me of something you would see there, and the guy's head would just like smush in between. That's a perfect example of what that maneuver would be. For the size difference between the two tag teams, mm-hmm. I thought the match went extremely well. I wasn't thrilled that they, again, I feel they're pulling, you know, authors of pain back. But now they have this dominant heel tag team and a pretty weak division right now next because they pulled so many of the tag teams up that it, we'll see where it goes. But interesting nonetheless, I wasn't surprised by it. 
I think you're going to have the other Australian group, uh, TM. I don't, dude. That guy blew one of the one of their boys blew out his knee. He's out for oh, seven, twelve months. Wow, I did not realize yeah, that. Yeah, uh, but that, you, that is kind so of so you do have beat. DIY. You still have the revival, which I love the old school because their slogan, Matt, is just fists, no flips. Which is you know, like <laughs> they look like I, I don't know how far back you go in wrestling, Matt, but they look like the old school Iron Anderson, freaking just. You know, Ric Flair, nineteen, you know, late nineteen eighties, early nineties wrestlers, where they're just out there just beating two guys that I feel like if you'd walk in the bar and you're like, "The fuck are you doing?" You're gonna get your less ass the in. asterisks, more <laughs> yeah. like yeah, just straight yeah. up badass. Yeah, yeah, they're not they're not yeah. bodies. You know, they're not some big bodybuilder John Cena type. They're just two dudes that would probably turn around and fuck your shit up and laugh at it and be like, how'd you like that one, Junior? <laughs> and walk out the goddamn they, door. They look at you like, what do we got over here? A couple of haters. <laughs> a couple of haters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. But uh, ne- needless to say, that was a good match. We had the four-way women's title match on next, which Evan, I'll let you talk about that one. Yeah, I'm going to be very short on this because <laughs> that's how this match felt. You know, you had a, you had an Oscar and you had uh, the chick from Sanity, Nikki? Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross, thank you. And then you had Billy, uh, what was it, Billy Hayes and Peyton. I just call them the two Australian chicks yeah. because they're not relevant. Like, I, didn't, I didn't get to watch it, yeah. unfortunately. It, it's, you, you weren't missing that much at all. Next is good. I actually almost prefer it over SmackDown and Raw at times, but... The women has taken a step down since promoting Bailey and Becky Lynch and Charlotte up to the main roster. They're really hurting. Oscar's a badass. Yeah, but Oscar. Oscar. Outside was awesome. of that, it's fucking slim, goddamn pickings. Yeah, and she was good in that match. But basically, how this match went is you had two the two Australian chicks because they're not even worth mentioning. Um, then you had Oscar and you had Nikki Cross, and. About halfway through the match, two Australian chicks do a double, uh, sorry, a double, uh, no, they do a double suplex. That's what they do. They do a double suplex onto an announcer's table, and they they ruin Nikki Cross. Like, she just lays there for the rest of the match. Billy Kay is one of them, and I'm telling you, it's Peyton something. I mean, not that it really matters. Uh, I'm still uh, Peyton Royce. That's the name. I'm still going to call them the two Australian chicks because <laughs> uh, again, with that. they're yeah, not. They're not going. They are not at a level to go anywhere. No, at no. all. Anyways, but so you have those two chicks, and then the rest of the match, you have Oscar fighting both of them. Um, she ends up picking up the win. Just she hits one like they try to take her out and she keeps kicking out and then she knocks out one and while the other one's uh, disoriented uh, I think Asuka hit him with the enziguri and when she did that that's when she got the pin um, the, ma- <laughs> the match kind of sucked because I was expecting more from Nikki Cross mm-hmm. she had really been having a big build up uh, with interrupting matches and kind of helping Asuka a little bit so I thought maybe they would do something where you would have an alliance between the two people. They would have a wrestling match, and then when it came down to it, you would have to turn on your friend at some point. Now, she took a hard bump, right, on on an announcer's table? Um, Nikki Cross did, yeah. It makes me wonder, because like you were talking, and I agree with Evan, watching the last few weeks, they have been pushing her. If she didn't legitimately get injured, and they just kind of, because she took that bump... Well, and I feel like they would have already announced something by now. I haven't seen anything, but usually, like like when Finn Balor got injured, it was literally 15 yeah. minutes afterwards. But that's main roster, man. I know, but still. I mean, it, even with next, you're still going to know. I, I feel like you should let them know. I don't, I don't feel like I'm going to turn on next next week and find out, you know, that, oh, Nikki Cross legitimately got hurt. Like, there's... Broke her spine. <laughs> yeah, like... Fractured oh, a couple yeah, of yeah. Like, she can't... Bacchiotomy. She... she uh, <laughs> Bacchiotomy? Yeah. yeah, that's a procedure. <laughs> that's a... That, that's a that's a work joke. <laughs> a neckiotomy. Yeah, should have never gave you motherfuckers money. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it was just... It was lackluster. 
you know, you might be right because it seemed at the end of the match like they just kind of, it just looked like shit. There wasn't mm. much going on. Maybe you're right, man. I don't It wasn't a good match. The match that I was excited for, though, was that title match between Shinsuke Nakamura and Bobby Roode. And from what all intents and purposes has been seen and told, it was glorious. Yes, it was. There is nothing more glorious than walking out on your intro and you've got four bitches on one side and then four more bitches on the other. In true just Ric Flair fashion with a robe around you that says glorious on the back, you hook up your arms and you walk those hoes right down into the ring. Sounds like me. Yeah, I mean, th- <laughs> this, like is, me. this is a regular Saturday night for Matt, but for us mortal men... You know, it's a that's a long that's like a dream. Craft beer and hoes. That's right, craft beer and hoes. Exclusively. <laughs> but yeah, you had awesome entrances from both Bobby Roode and then Shinsuke Nakamura had an awesome one, which I'm pretty sure even though he's Japanese or Chinese whatever, his eyes squint. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But <laughs> But in all seriousness, he was riding down on a fucking moving platform with strobe lights and his strong style pose right into his eyes. And if he didn't already squint enough as it fucking was, like he couldn't, I'm sure he couldn't see for the first 10 minutes of that match. It wasn't possible. So they they had an excellent match though. It really drug out for a while and uh, Shinsuke did do, he, he sold really well a leg injury which Bobby Roode exposed to end up getting the win. That's something we didn't see tonight at all. What? On Rumble. Leg injuries? Anyone being sold. <laughs> True. But, oh, my goodness. Well, that that's how just... That's a good segue. Why don't we just segue into that? The Rumble, Bob, huh? Yeah, the Rumble. Bobby Roode won the next championship. The Rumble. And we're glad. But on to the Rumble, which this seems to be a normal thing that happens every year, is the... Uh, Terrible selling of the crowd the chanting bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of a kind of a thing. The the <laughs> the, the no no sell at the end, completely. So we'll jump into it. We started off with a women's title match. Actually, hold on, we'll back up. We'll go to the pre-show, and the only thing that was important on the pre-show, and that's the fact that Sheamus and Cesaro dropped the belts to Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Which it's about fucking time they did something with them. I, I agree. It was good. It was a time to finally put the belts on them. I wasn't a fan of how they won. It wasn't in dominant fashion. It was... I will say this. It was a little old school heel because they cheated to win, and that's what I want to see out of my bad guys. But nonetheless, it was still kind of a weak victory. You go to the main card, and to open up the Royal Rumble, you have... Charlotte versus Bailey in what was a decent match for both. Bailey should have won just because I'm in love with her, but <laughs> needless to say, Charlotte protects her undefeated streak on the pay per view. And Bailey walks around or walks away with a very strong showing in an opening match to get things started. I follow Bailey on Instagram. Oh, there we go, kids. There's another. Yeah, there's another person I follow on Instagram. I follow a lot of people on Instagram. <laughs> and what do you think of young Miss Bailey? Have you watched any of her matches? Um, well, the most important thing is she's pretty attractive. And uh, she's really theatrical, if anything. Uh, really dramatic. Um, and, and you got to have that because whether it's selling a maneuver where you're taking damage whether it's giving a maneuver where your opponent is getting hurt. Mm. If that's not there, you you know, listen, we all know that it it's predetermined who the winner is going to be. That's not the fact. These people are out there, and they're doing intense maneuvers that could really cause harm, and it just adds even more to it when you have two, you know, competitors that are being experts in their craft, really trying to show the damage or whatever the case may be. So that match went on without a hitch and ended up being Charlotte walking away retaining her undefeated streak and her title belt and Mm -hmm. Bailey catching the L instead of the D. But she's still attractive. Well, she's always got that going. We always have our health. Ultra attractive. Like, seriously. (laughs) Bailey, if you ever happen to stumble upon the main event, Mm -hmm. my name is Evan Wells. Mm -hmm. 
You can come find me in southern Indiana. Just hit me up on Twitter. You'll find me on Facebook. Actually, go to Facebook and find the main event, and I'll take care of you. If you just, even if we just hug, that's all I want. <laughs> that may You're, be all he needs. Yeah, right. That may be all he can. Uh, You're be all he can handle. You're you're a hugger. I'm a hugger. Mm-hmm. We can hug it out. I'm sorry you lost the match. You should have won it, but you'll get there. I fully believe that. Then we moved into the what was it? it was the KO Roman Reigns match, wasn't it? Yes. In typical fashion, I called it from the get go that suspending Chris Jericho at the top of the ring would only involve having him drop a foreign weapon down. That was aided in winning the match. Where However, did, where did he hide those brass knuckles? Uh, up in his nutsack, homie. That's where you put those. Do you not have a special pocket behind your nutsack <laughs> where you can hide things? <laughs> to, I mean, to, to you, to you uh, guys. Is that just us? Uh, that's where I carry my gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's just in your nutsack. Yeah, you just reach it. He has a little bang for the buck, if you know what I mean. Oh. Uh, so. Chris Jericho drops a pair of uh, brass knucks down. That's used, but that's not how the match ends. The match ends how, Evan? Uh, Braun Strowman just strolls on into the match. This is a notice qualification match, by the way, so anything can happen. Braun Strowman just comes in while uh, while KO is pretty much down for the count, just praying for his life over in a corner. Braun Strowman just comes in and beats the shit out of Roman Reigns and eventually just throws him through a table and just dusts him off and says, here you go, Kevin Owens. We have absolutely no clue what that means. Or I, I guess it's the start of a feud next week is what it comes down to. It's, it's, that's poor shit right there. Probably. It probably has something to do with the double spear between Roman Reigns, Goldberg, and Braun Strowman. That's probably what they're going to go with. Um but again, you know, it kind of goes with Braun Strowman's character, is that he does what he wants, when he wants. So, Except maybe. for in the Rumble. We'll get to that in a minute, folks. <laughs> I would have yeah. stood up and beat the shit out of somebody after I, during the Rumble after I saw Brock Lesnar go over the fucking ropes. Ah, uh, yes, we will yes. We, we will get to that. <laughs> there, before, there's before there's a jump. lot of hate there, yeah, if you yeah. haven't noticed. But, but before we get there, we have the AJ Styles-John Cena match. Which ends up being, I'll go ahead and let the spoiler out for our fans. I'm sure you've seen it on social media. John Cena ties the all time record with Ric Flair the for 16 world championship reigns. Now, I'll, my hat's off to John. I got to give it to him because obviously he's put in the work. He's been a company man, he's done all the things. Put up with Amy Schumer. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a horrible sex scene. So he's obviously more of a man than I am. Uh, but listen, if you can hold up a towel with your dick, I mean, that's something to say. There, that's there, there, there you go. But you the got fa- a frozen rope if I've ever seen one. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is uh, again, just like The Undertaker losing the streak at WrestleMania, I didn't ever think that Ric Flair's record should have been broke. Now, here's why the WWE did it. Well, it's not, not broken. Not, it's tied. It tied. will be broke. And here's why. Because Ric Flair didn't win the WWE Championship 16 times. He won multiple World Heavyweight Championships all over the old school territories. Which to me makes you a far greater wrestler because you have to go into somewhere new and they have to put their faith and ability in you and you work to that spot and get that title shot again. That's the only thing that will ever separate and taint. (laughs) Taint. Um, Cena's 16 (laughs) title runs. Which is where you hide a pair of brass knuckles. (laughs) Exactly. Quite clearly. (laughs) That's the only difference between Flair and Cena for me. Yeah, I mean, that's a big difference. I think the thing, too, something that bothers me, you know, Cena is a big superstar. He's trying to pull off what The Rock is doing. What The Rock tries to do. Well, I mean, The Rock does it pretty well. I've got to give him that. But the problem is, is AJ Styles is so, so charismatic, and people love AJ. I love AJ. He's an awesome superstar and I'm so glad he came from New Japan over to the WWE to SmackDown. It's great. He has wonderful mic work. His wrestling abilities are phenomenal. You you can't beat it. And it just it, it kills me that they're taking that title away from him from some guy that, you know, might not be there every week. John Cena's gonna have to be on SmackDown having matches and having mic time Every single week up until WrestleMania or whatever the next pay per view is. John Cena's not going to be there every week. I mean, well, he's, he's still doing movies. 
Exactly, and that's that's the problem. Is if he's going to be doing movies, he's going to be there slash not really be there. He either needs to lose the title real quick, or he just needs to show up, and they need to work that out. It's like Zach and I have talked about before: is that part timers don't deserve unless they're going to be there for a significant amount of time to push a storyline. They don't deserve to be there the whole time. You know, you can't just have a title. Like, that's bullshit. You know, if Cena's there for two weeks and doesn't show up again till the Rumble, you know, like, no one can even have a fucking title match. You can't even develop a story off that if Cena's not there, so I hope he is. Well, then they do the old school video montage horse shit, and I agree with you. Over it, what? Rough. Because I, yeah. Randy Orton won the Royal Rumble, and he's on SmackDown, so you're, what montage are you going to have with him and John Cena? The past history that they've had, but that's about it. And then, which is which? Yeah, how Randy long Orton's ago, full time. Which how long ago has that been? It's been a minute. It's been quite a while. Exactly. You're gonna pull up shit from fucking 2007 for Randy Orton and John I, Cena. I'm very confused with that win as well. But that's getting into and I think jumping ahead. So you have the Rumble. You started out 30 man Rumble. I was very disappointed in this. The fact that there was no real legends brought back. I mean, yes, Undertaker is considered a legend. But he was billed prior to. There was no one that was a surprise, really. Ty Dillinger wasn't a surprise because that dumbass leaked his own shit on Twitter. You know, there was no one else that was really a surprise. And the fact that we saw guys who should have been more dominant, like Matt said with Brock Lesnar, eliminated within fucking two minutes was ridiculous. By Goldberg again. More. Yeah, but yeah. Which I honestly believe, I said it earlier. I think the WWE is punishing Lesnar for the failed drug test in the UFC, which was for an estrogen blocker, which means he was coming off cycle. Now, anyone in their right fucking mind understands, even though Lesnar has been a man beast his whole life, you can look at photos as he was coming up through college and everything else, that along with John Cena and along with most of your top tier guys and most of your top tier athletes in any sport, they're using performance enhancing drugs because they're on the road 365, 24-7, and that's the only way they can maintain. You can't have a workout regimen on a bus. No, no, it's, it's not possible. So you have to do what you have to do. But they're punishing him for it. So again, what happens? Lesnar comes in, he clears house and just beats down fucking everybody. And then Goldberg comes in and eliminates him after a spear and a clothesline. It was weak as fuck. It ruined the whole, you know, the rematch per se. And then what happens again? Undertaker comes in. Lights go dim. We're all like, all right, Undertaker's back. He shows up. Ends up eliminating Goldberg and a bunch of other people. Only to be ousted by fucking Roman Reigns. Oh! (laughs) Especially since... Lesnar coming back from like coming back to be an athlete and being on TV again in the spotlight after being sick, diverticulitis, having twice. surgery yeah. Twice. twice. Yeah. And it's just it's ridiculous. And the money that he's made WWE when he went to MMA because their oh, their name followed him. So it turned people who are still MMA fans after he was knocking dudes out made them turn on WWE and watch. Heavyweight title. You know, I mean, it, it's it's crazy to think of. I, I don't like what they did with Lesnar. I don't like what they did with Goldberg. They didn't do shit with him. He well, was in there for a hot minute. They prepped that for a title run, and I get that you're taking two shows and slamming them together in a 30-man Royal Rumble, but the problem is is that You have hyped up this rivalry between Lesnar and Goldberg. And then have an Undertaker show up once or twice. Yeah, and Undertaker shows up, but... They weren't even in the ring together, all three of them. And that's the thing, like... And I'll get to my feelings on Undertaker in a moment. But you're talking about Goldberg, who's come back, and the big deal with him has been that he's on the cover of WWE 2K17... And that's the whole reason he got brought back, because they did that with the Ultimate Warrior once. There's this big conspiracy about it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, use Google. You'll find it. I don't feel like so explaining like it. So Goldberg die next year? Probably. Mm. But, you know, I, I can't. I'm not Nostradamus. Anyways, um, 
it's just it's really weak to see them show up at the Rumble and then just get ousted just real quick as, as soon as they get in the ring. It, it's ridiculous. Undertaker, I kind of get because for a long time, someone has all... I mean, even when he first started out, there's always been someone in control of The Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Whether he had Paul Bear or Vince McMahon, you know, someone's got the urn and they have control of what Undertaker does. Of course, they broke away from that, and now he's kind of his own man, finally. He's finally grown up. <laughs> but he's also in his 50s. Yeah, he grew up in his 50s. Slightly in his 50s. Yeah, but... And 27 years of wrestling has gotten to the poor guy. Because while it was great to see him in the ring, it was also like it hurt my heart from a nostalgia point. Because he's, he's in his 50s. He doesn't move. His knees are bad. His ankles are fucked. His hips are... Like, you can see it. Like, yes, is he in great shape for a 50-year-old dude who's been wrestling for 27 years? Absolutely. And does he look good for having painted eyeliner on <laughs> for 91 years? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But the fact of the matter is, like, he can't get in there and go like he used to. And and you don't expect him to, but that's the thing. Like, that's why all these legends showed up, mm-hmm. quote-unquote legends, at the end of the Rumble. But they weren't even there for very long. And again, as I've said before, I am all for having a... I'm all for having your younger guys and the guys that are there the whole time that have established themselves for them to get those title shots. With your legends, the way you have to play it is you have to have them in there. They can have big moments, eliminate a bunch of guys, and be in there for a while. But they're not supposed to win it. Like, your legends, like we talk about stepping stones, you know, like Rusev, like to get to certain titles. Yeah. The legends are stepping stones to the title, okay? If you can beat The Undertaker, if you can beat Brock Lesnar, if you can beat Goldberg, okay, you've got a shot at the WWE Championship. But Orton beat none of them and still is getting to go to WrestleMania in the title. Right, and that's going to be a thing that we're going to see uh, on SmackDown is is Orton... Is the Wyatt family, because Bray Wyatt talked about how whoever wins in the family, like he's the one going to WrestleMania, they're going to play that whole thing out, and whether or not the next pay-per-view, if John Cena loses the title and AJ gets it back or whatever, you know, you're going to see... You're going to see that play out. I honestly don't know what they're going to do with that, and I don't know what they're going to do with Raw. Like, it, Raw, it, it, Raw's like, going to continue with the Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho, best friend thing, but which is fine. I mean, it's funny, and a lot of people seem to like it. Did but, anyone else feel like they were getting gagged with Roman Reigns this evening, too? Can they just back off him just a smidgen? I know John Cena's out the door, and they're trying to pass the torch to the next guy, but Jesus Christ, you know, how do you lose two events in one evening? <laughs> well, that, lose a title shot then turn around he didn't I don't even think he he didn't even eliminate Braun Strowman who cost him the title belt and Braun Strowman was ousted way early in the rumble and then Reigns is like right in there with the three or four mix and he gets ousted it made no fucking sense exactly and that's that's a problem too is again as Matt said earlier the entire crowd was just chanting bullshit for a good ten minutes. As soon as, <laughs> and then you heard Roman Reigns, and it just got even worse. If if the WWE is listening to their fans at all, no one wants fucking Roman Reigns in there. Nobody fucking likes him. He doesn't have a title belt of any kind. We don't want him to have a title belt. Go away. Change your look. Change your weak ass finisher. Come back. Be savage. Like he has a great look. He is a great built guy, but he's still riding off the Shield's coattails. Yeah. He's still got the same fucking look. You can't do that. Even John Cena, even though it was a slight variation from the Doctor of Thumbnomics to Hustle, Loyalty, Respect, there was a change there. Hogan made it way late in his career, but it made him popular again when he went to the NWO and went into the white and black. Sting did the same thing. Like You have to find your niche, your change. And become that person, whether it's a heel churn, which we've said before on this podcast and talking in general, that Roman Reigns should be a heel and should be nasty and devastating and not giving a fuck about anything. If you want the fans to hate him, 
Make him truly hate him to the point that he's popular because they hate him. You want to... What you need to do with Roman Reigns, get rid of the body armor, get rid of the pants, all that shit. Let him go back to his Samoan roots, like like you've told me many times, Zach. And just let him... Let him let him loose. Just let him be a fucking animal. Yeah. Like have Get him, him a bunch of like Samoan tattoos of like, patterns. He's already, he's already, got, already got, it. got it. Well show him. Yeah. yeah. Show well, all of them. I mean literally just like it's like, on that's his chest. His thing. It's on his chest and stuff. That's the thing. He should have a match where he goes out, he loses the match. And he just goes ape shit and starts ripping off his vest and just being brutal, powerbombing the motherfucker, powerbombing the ref, fucking punching goddamn announcers. Maybe grab a fan. A villain. not a real fan. Make him a villain. Yeah. Pull his ass in the ring, beat the piss out of that kid, and then just goes somewhat wild and nasty and and to the point where anytime he's in an interview, it's, I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do and there's nothing you can do about it. Let him, you know... I mean, believe that, <laughs> right? And let let him let him have that trans transcendence, and have him fucking you know Corey Graves who used to wrestle like mm-hmm. hey, grab him from the announcers table, and rather than do your pussy ass Superman punch like spear the motherfucker or just power bomb him onto his own announcer table to let people know like this is the new me like rip all your shit off and be a Samoan god or whatever it is yeah. that you want to be he could change. He could change his entire perspective, like lose the whole Roman Empire bullshit because what empire do you have fucking behind you? The shield is when not everybody's there. Everybody's booing your ass. Exactly. The shield is not behind you anymore. There is no quote-unquote Roman Empire for you to to pimp. There's nothing there. So change change the look. Just do something the different. The Rock Samoan. Well, the, He's related cousins, to The Rock. The Rock. We, we've come to this conclusion that every person in pro wrestling that is Samoan is related to the, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah, Nikki, Nikki uh, Jax probably. from Next. Yeah, Nikki is, Jax. They're all cousins and everything. Seriously, it, it's crazy, but it is what it is. But they're to, Samoan. There's not a lot of people there. Yeah. It, when I go to the Philippines, I'll tell you all about it. It's fine. <laughs> that's not Samoan. You in the Philippines. Uh, I swear, you in the Philippines money. and yeah. for, for whatever reason, <laughs> there are people that are upset that me and friends are going to the Philippines, so I've made it a quest in my life just to include it everywhere I can. That's what I'm talking about, kids. But... No, in all seriousness, he definitely needs a change. I want to see him change because I feel I could get behind him as a bad guy. Yeah, th- absolutely. Then as the semi-heel, whatever the fuck he's got going on. Um, and, and that's with a lot of people. You know, I want to see Seth Rollins, who I feel they're making more of a baby face. I want to see him be, you know, whatever he's going to be, let's do it. If he's going to be a baby face, make him a baby face. But if he's going to be a heel... Make him a legit fucking heel. I want him to be nasty. I want him to be mean. I want him to cheat to win. Because that's what heels did back in the day. Ric Flair earned the nickname the dirtiest player in the game for a reason. Because he'd eye gouge you, low blow you, spit in your eye. Whatever he had to do to retain that belt. And you don't see that anymore. You see that that fuzzy line that's right there. And it's horseshit. I agree. I'm a... So something we always do on the podcast, we we'll always have like the TV on, and we'll be watching TV shows and things like that. Not to get off cuff here, but there's this thing called flipping fantastic. <laughs> flipping fantastic. I <laughs> just pointed it out to everyone. I'm not sure if you guys were watching it before, but it's, dear lord, the, it's where you make flipping pancakes or flipping eggs and or hash browns, or, bro. Hash browns. Yeah, yeah, and eggs apparently, and 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 the person who presented it is. Neither a male or female. It's a gender I've never seen. I, I don't know if you guys <laughs> saw that. He's a, a non-binary cook, if you will. If if anything at all. And he was flipping things all over the place. <laughs> flipping yeah. genders, flipping everything. <laughs> man, woman, man, woman. It's crazy. <laughs> Shit got real in here, folks. But yeah, like they have these little, uh, it's like a plastic holder. It was a silicone. Silicone holder, yeah. and it has holes in it, and you pour your, your dough or whatever you want to put in there, an egg, if you will, Make and you cook it, and then it's flipping fantastic. Yeah. You flip that son of a bitch over, and then you heat it on the other side. Which, for whatever reason, why don't you just use a, a fucking, you know, a spatula and just flip her over? But because, okay. What's if, so hard if, if about no that? If no one's seen this before, you've seen the fails on 
Facebook where they do all the fails from the commercial TVs where it's like someone trying to pour a drink and they pour the whole... And they purposely the, pour it out like on the, the counter. Whole, the whole gallon or they're opening a bag of chips and they throw it everywhere. <laughs> like all that shit. That, that It's one of those. I mean, it's a, it's a gimmick because... There's some fat retard sitting at home right now that's like, I love pancakes and I hate flipping them. You know what? I'm going to buy me a flipping fantastic. And Mary Sue will like one too. I'll buy two. (laughs) Mary Sue. No, but if you buy one, you get the other one free, obviously. True true word. So Mary Sue gets hers anyway. Ship it to Alabama. Four payments of $19.99, which is the same you can get a fucking six pack of Hot Slam for. (laughs) Uh, I'd rather have the hop slam. Right. Word. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, I listen. There was five title changes out of I think the eight titles that we had in the WWE, which was unique in itself. I think to see that many title changes happen, I wasn't thrilled with all of them. Some of them I agreed with. I was not a fan of the Rumble itself. I'll be interested to see what they're going to do with Randy Orton going forward. Is he going? Which it looks like he'll be going after John Cena at WrestleMania and what happens from there. I was sad to see AJ drop the belt. He shouldn't have dropped it. That was ridiculous. Um, But the fact of the matter is, it is what it is. So I think the next one up might be Fastlane. It might be something else. I'm not for sure. They haven't promoted it yet. But April 2nd is WrestleMania. So we have that time from now to establish a storyline that hopefully isn't a gigantic amount of shit. Or you could... Well, this doesn't work for SmackDown, but you could just have Finn Balor come back. I did have someone uh, someone hit me up on Facebook earlier. It, it's unconfirmed. But someone who is in the wrestling universe uh, has mentioned that uh, Finn Balor might actually be coming back on Monday. See, but then why the fuck wouldn't you have him debut? You know, debut, 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 debut. debut. That's, yeah, French. that's hop slam it, it's talk. French, right? huh? Yeah. It's French debut in the Rumble. <laughs> All right? Like, like why? If he's gonna come back and he's healthy enough to wrestle and obviously appear on the show, like that would have sent the fucking building. Like that, I would have been happy with just seeing him debut again. Uh, and again, Kenny Omega, I kind of want to punch you in the dick. Because you had such an outstanding match at the IW or IG, yeah, IWJP, that in freaking, and you're not coming to the WWE, and it makes me just kind of want to poke myself in the fucking eyeball. Because if you'd have showed up there, even if you'd have got eliminated, which I'm sure you would have, it would have made my night. And unfortunately, you're going back to Japan, which with the way the WWE's writing, you're probably better off, my friend. Yeah, but at the same token, if they had a star like that, they could probably write something better. I'm just saying, I'm butthurt that I'm not going to get to see AJ Styles and Kenny Omega for the title. At any pay-per-view, I don't give a fuck which one it is. I that mean, would be tits. tits. Maybe, maybe he'll come I later. Like tits, though. Me too. We love tits. Big, round tits. Um... Maybe right, let's go there. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna go there. Just make it. just throw it on out there, kids. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like think about that. Like no guy oh likes boy. anything oh small. Uh, mm, no. Small utility bills. <laughs> no, no, small no. rent. <laughs> small price for beer. <laughs> So you're, so you're fucking wrong. So not buying um, hops. My, my, yeah, you, we apparently just don't like that anymore. Oh, man. My, Let me rephrase that sentence for you. No guy likes anything small as far as certain attributes as the, the bosoms and the caboose of a female. We all well, like I them mean, big. She, Accuracy. She can't necessarily help it in some areas. I mean... You're what areas what are you mama, talking about? Well, you're born with what mama gave you. You are, and that's fine. That's true. But men have men do have a preference, like one way or the other. I've never met a guy that's just like, well, I'm okay with either one. No, that's not true. There's one you prefer more than the other. True. I agree. I'm a butt guy. I am as well. Zach is a boob guy. I am so. a boob guy because here's the thing. Um, I don't get to sit around and play with the turd cutter. But when I'm doing work, it's right there in front of me, and, and that's where the action is, folks. So that's just... Uh, yeah, but you different. look at a female's caboose more than you look at the chi-chis. Not, not, not if they're big enough, you don't. <laughs> well, no, but, that, but that's the thing. Like, you can look at both, but it is easier to get away with the caboose than it is the Yeah, because they're turned around. Exactly. Normally. 
Normally. Unless you have a camera, then you're not it. <laughs> and most, dear mother of God, and this mo- podcast has went from, <laughs> from explicit to triple X. Listen, we it'll we, be all right. We said on this podcast, and it's on our fucking Facebook, oh. that we we were explicit and that we liked women on the uh. podcast. There's nothing wrong with talking about well, it. Well, true, true, that's true. But I said preference. <laughs> And there's no, nothing we're wrong. gonna we're gonna when this show is over, everyone, if you're listening, <laughs> we're gonna make a poll. You know, the <laughs> Facebook polls. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Is your face red yet? I've never made your face red. You got a little redness right there. Look at yeah. you. It's probably the booze talking. On, honestly, probably. I've, uh, I've had quite a few already. Uh, but needless to say, no. Seriously though, women love them. Uh, Absolutely. Want to kill most of them, but <laughs> love the rest of well, them. Well, they're just as confusing as j- they get. Just as a disclaimer, we. We enjoy women. We support them in any shape, form, or and fashion. And sometimes Evan enjoys men. <laughs> <laughs> is is uh, that, uh, that, that, that no, that's not know. true? Uh, no, it's, Matt, that's, it's not true. Uh, okay, see, so it is true. I'm so, confirming here. So, breaking <laughs> news. So a few months ago, he had gay AIDS, and I'm just saying, like, uh, the shit was real. Did you no, every no. time like, get rid of the uh, gay AIDS? Well, yeah. see, see, we talked about this on, like, I think episode one. Because we actually, before iTunes got off their fucking ass, um, <laughs> yeah. Had, and by we, the way, we actually recorded like thirteen podcasts, and through that, Evan had some. He had like gonosifa herfalades. I because we this. get on there as soon as we key up the mic. He's like, <laughs> and start dying every time he talked. I'm I had him, this like, terrible disease. Sakes. I don't know what it was, but I would start talking. It didn't matter if it was on podcast. Pneumonia or syphilis. Or it's yeah, real. Yeah. yeah, it's real. Trust me. It's it's just uh, the, the black herp. I mean, just <laughs> that, uh, that's why I'm going to the Philippines so I can get that disease again because it feels great. Uh, or get it cured in an illegal yeah, fashion yeah, yeah, in the U.S. Yeah. You know, it, can I can I talk about my Philippine trip for a minute? Uh, no, no. I, no I want to mention. Give, I want to mention no something. One gives a fuck about the Philippines. They're gonna give a fuck when I make a podcast. Uh, you're, you're gonna, they're gonna <laughs> give a fuck when I'm I'm on the podcast begging our fans. To contact the president to get you released from the terrorist organization <laughs> yes, that captures I, your dumb ass. I believe you should talk about the Philippines, but then we're going to talk about the Bulls losing. Oh, uh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you went there, Matt, and I like it that you did, because, oh. man, do I have something for all those Bulls fans Well, out we're going to let you talk all See, about we were, it. We weren't even going to talk real sports, but now you just uh, opened up Now the it's there. You... Oh, no, but it's very relevant. The, the Bulls lost, and I knew I had to bring it up. Oh. God damn it. Watched all the highlights. Oh, man. Oh, make so, it short and sweet, so we got another beer review. Yeah, we do. So, uh, quick quick thing on the Philippines I want to talk about is just that... Uh, That's not the Bulls. We, I said I was going to talk about the Philippines. And quick. The Philippines. Quick. Two minutes on the Philippines. Here we go. Uh, One, so, two. Oh, you're going to count. <laughs> no. I like how it is. <laughs> no, so I uh, plan a trip for the Philippines with a couple guys I work with. I just want to mention that it's really fucking cheap to go to the Philippines. Like to get a villa there for for six people is about a hundred bucks for every like for each person. It's insane how cheap it is. On top of that, a rum and coke in the Philippines with a thirty to seventy rum to coke ratio. Because you know someone's doing goddamn chemistry and shit over there to make sure it's. I went to the University of Kentucky. <laughs> The. And, uh, yeah, like, you know, as they say, like, the Ohio State, it's the University of Kentucky. Uh, go Cats. And, uh, it's a dollar there. And on top of that, just for our craft beer drinkers out mm-hmm. there, they have special beers that are way over, they're like 20 to 30% alcohol. I haven't even told Zach about this yet, but I'm going to try to smuggle some back for the podcast. I don't even know if it's legal, but there are beers out there that they have. Yes, are, lots of things aren't legal, though, but we still do it. Jaywalking, I mean, not stopping at all the stop signs. Did you know, speaking of jaywalking, that that used to be like a legitimate insult back in the day? Like when someone called you a jaywalker, people got offended. So it's like it's like being a... Like a douchebag? Yeah, like, if I called someone a douchebag, like, you know, they get offended about it, but I said, hey, you fucking jaywalker. People back in the 40s and 50s used to get upset about that shit. So, like, in the, I don't know, 2030, you can call someone a dumb shit, 
And it'll be like, oh that, yeah, you just crossed the road at the wrong place. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, you're a fucking jaywalker. You'd be like, oh goddamn, no, you didn't. <laughs> That's all I had to say about the Philippines is that it's cheap. Fight me! I might get a tattoo while I'm down there on my Dude, face. That will so be an AIDS did, tattoo. Did the Bulls win on Friday? No, they didn't. Let me, oh, they didn't. Let me tell you about the Chicago they, they Bulls. They won the night, though. They did. They, I mean, beat, they beat up on the poor, sh- lowly sh- seven. What about Friday? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's cover up their win tonight. <laughs> so, the Bulls have imploded. And part of that has to do with O. O. Gar Foreman, who is the owner or GM, whatever the fuck he is. The, for the same Bulls. guy who fucked everything up back when Jordan was there, correct? You are absolutely correct, mm, Zach. Mm, Let me tell you what this numb nuts mm, did. So they lost to Miami on on Friday, but prior to that, mm-hmm. they lost the game before that. I think it was to the Mavericks. Yes, yeah, to the Mavericks, and. Jimmy Butler and D-Wade on the Mavericks game went out and fucking balled. Jimmy Butler had 40 points. Uh, D-Wade wasn't too far behind him. And the rest of the team just wasn't doing so good. And the media portrayed Jimmy Butler and D-Wade as going to the media and saying, hey, our young players aren't owning up to what they're doing and they're bashing and they, they bash the young players saying that they don't have heart, you know, they're just trying to get a paycheck, which is probably true because the way I watch some of them play, it's kind of like that sometimes. Not all of them, but there are a few kids that are like that. I mean, you can just see it in their eyes. Like, when you're, when you're a man, when you're a competitor, you know. Like, you can see it. You can look at a man and know. Zach's a fucking Marine. Like, he can tell you, like, whether or not someone's got the fight in their eyes or not. Like, he can just tell. Most men are like that. But especially if you're in that situation, you can just tell. Yep. That's, how, that's how men are, unless you're a pussy bitch. But anyways. There are some. Uh, and everybody likes pussy, but no one likes a bitch. I concur. <laughs> Sometimes so, you got to deal with one to get the other. Yeah. So, so, Accuracy. So, so Gar Foreman benches D. Wade and Jimmy Butler because he felt as though they were being too harsh they on their young They needed discipline. Team. They need discipline. Somehow. Do you think, let me let me just lay it out for you. I'm not even going to talk about D-Wade because I kind of get why they benched D-Wade because he's only been there for 42 games. But Jimmy <laughs> Butler has been there since the beginning of the Derrick Rose era and has been dicked around his entire goddamn career with the Bulls. They didn't build around him. They wanted to go with old veterans still with getting Rondo and D-Wade. And... They don't try to build around him. Like, he's the man. He knows he's the man. He can be a good leader. But how the fuck do you expect me to try to become a new leader when you bring in fucking Dwayne Wade and Rajon Rondo? Two old guys who have won NBA championships, but they're on the the absolute end of their career. How do you expect me to take the leadership role when I'm having to fight those two guys to be a leader? Exactly. Exactly. Answer that shit, Gar Foreman. I hope you fucking listen to this podcast, because, like, I'll give you my number. We can call me up and talk about I'm it. I'm all I'm saying. Fight me. Yeah. Like, seriously, it's fucking bullshit. And, of course, tonight they came out, and they've kicked the shit out of the 76ers. Of course, it is the 76ers, but still. You don't, you don't bench someone like just Jimmy Butler. You don't bench him just because he's upset. He's got a fucking reason to be upset because that whole fucking organization has dicked his ass around since he came from Tom Ball, Texas to come play for the Chicago Bulls. This is another man like we've talked about with Conor McGregor that came from fucking nothing and now is a two-way superstar, is an all-star in the NBA on the East, greatest, going to be one of the greatest scoring guards and uh, small forwards to ever play the game. But he gets fucking dicked around, and you want to bench him for it? You want to act like it's his fault? It's not his fault. And that's all I got to say about the Bulls. That's all I have to say about the Bulls. Uh, they did way better tonight. They did much better tonight. They much beat, better tonight. They, they beat the 76 bench Sixers. everyone? No. They uh, they benched Rondo <laughs> like they have been, which he's probably going to get traded. Yeah, well, they're, they're kind of done with him. Yeah, he's a, he is not doing well. He's uh, older, though, you know. He's older, but the thing is, is they're talking about him being a great teammate, and I don't think if people have realized this, but 
even back when Rondo played for the University of Kentucky, the big thing with Rondo, especially if you went to school there at the time, and I've heard this just from going to school, is while he may have been great at UK, that dude was running around fucking his other teammates' girlfriends. Like, he wasn't a good teammate. You know, he wants to boast about how he's such a great teammate now. He wasn't. He never was. He does shit behind the lines that people don't see, and it just doesn't get talked about. Mm-hmm. So, don't. no one should ever try to convince me that Rondo's a good teammate, because he's not. Because he'll bang your girl in a minute. Oh, he's that kind of guy. Yeah. So, uh, tying it up. We're going to do our last beer review for the evening. Evan's going to go grab uh, the second one that we're going to do. A little cracker open and uh, hopefully wrap this bad boy up. A little shorter than the last two weeks, which is a good thing. We don't want to kill you all. We want to be able to catch us within a car ride or two on the way home. And enjoy everything that we're talking about because, man, can we get to harping about stuff. Wrestling, Lord, yeah. <laughs> wrestling has been painful this week. The Bulls have been painful this week. Yeah, you know, they were painful on Friday. Oh, you know something? Like, so, two things. I saw two things this week, and we talked about making our predictions. So, I'm going to open this up here as we get ready to pop these beers. We're going to do our Super Bowl predictions, which will be oh, our yes. regular thing. We're not going to talk who we like or whatever. We're just going to give you our straight up what we think our score is going to be to end the game and who's going to win. I'll uh, I'll start it off not to put you two on the you know on the edge real quick. I think it's going to be literally 36-31 Falcons. 36-31 Falcons. 36-31 Falcons. That's what I'm calling. Falcons, eh? Yep, I'm calling Falcons. I even though Tom Brady Hall of Famer, I think uh, Matt Ryan, I think it's his year. What do you I got, hate, Matt? I hate Tom Brady. We all hate Tom Brady, Matt. Everyone hates <laughs> because, Tom Brady. Because he came from nothing and he's uber successful and married to If a you do woman. not like the Patriots, you do not like Tom Brady. Exactly. You cannot. It's. So, um, I'm tired of looking at Tom Brady. Um, be honest, I think it'll be a pretty good scoring game. Uh, both teams are tacking a lot. A lot. Um, I think it'll be 42 to. 36. That's a high scoring, but I like it. I like it. Who do you got winning it, though? Falcons. Falcons. We got two Absolutely. Falcons. I don't think we can do the trifecta of Falcons. What do you got, Evan? That's actually, I was going to say the Falcons, and I was going to say the exact same score that you did. I think that. 36. Man, that's a high score in the Super Bowl. Listen, defense is not going to be a thing in this Super Bowl. They're both solid. They're, it's both yeah, going to be yeah, high octane yeah. offense. Yeah. The only way, like, what you're going to be able to tell from this game, and I will say it right here, the first person to get picked off, whether it's Tom Brady or Matt Ryan, whichever person gets picked off first or has, like, a big stop, that team is going to be in the morale change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where it's going to happen. So the advantage that the Patriots have, though, is they've been here a bunch, and the Falcons are making it only back the second time in franchise history. That's back when Michael Vick was in it, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It was way back, way, way prior to that. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Negative, Ghost Rider. Uh, so I will say this, though. If there's going to be an MVP candidate that's not a quarterback. Julio Jones? It will be Julio Jones for the Falcons. <laughs> because that kid is a fucking monster. Even though he's out of Alabama, roll tide. Roll tide, roll, roll tide. Roll tide, roll. Yeah. Uh, he is a fucking stud and probably the best wide receiver in the league. Obviously, if it's New England, they'll probably give it to Tom Brady because I think he maybe has another year or so in him, and then he'll roll away. Other than that, if you could book any WWE Championship match for WrestleMania, I don't care which brand, Raw, SmackDown, whatever it is, who would you book? Just one title match. Just give it to me. It doesn't matter who's in it. Any title? The, the the heavyweight belt or the universal belt? Who okay. Would it be? All right. So for uh, the universal belt, who I would like to see, I'd like to see uh, just because I've been watching the greatest matches on WWE recently. If I could have a Vampiro, and uh, it's just going to be in the second Human Torch match because there's never been another one since him and Sting. If I could have Vampiro and 
Uh, we'll do a new guy. We'll say Finn Balor. Because they both have that kind the of Demon darkness. King versus Vampiro in a Human Torch match. Yes, for the universal for the universal title. All right. Now, if you've seen Vampiro on the Lucha Underground, you would realize that he is not uh, in ring shape. But if we're going old is school, is he on Lucha Underground? Now? Yeah, he's one of the color commentators and has kind of he wrestles every now and again in very small well, vignettes. Listen, if you put on the face paint and all that, you won't know the difference. Nah, he's pretty pretty hefty now. When you say hefty, like like time has taken him. Like, like but he's, he's not like 300 pounds, right? No, but he's... Because time has he, taken the Undertaker, yeah, but he's still there. Yeah, but he's... He, he's sort he, of there. Yeah, he's not He's not the 140-pound meth head-looking dude he used to be. Uh, I'm saying. That being was, said, Matt, even if you're wanting to go old school with it, who would you book for WrestleMania this year in a title match? Oh, goodness. And just anybody. It could be any genre, anything you'd want to see. Um, I'd love to see someone like new school that's like super badass, a big dude versus Hulk Hogan. Mm. I'd love to see it just because Hulk Hogan is so iconic and he's made so much for himself. Just like that old school, just like down and dirty, like <clears throat> kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? Hey, take your vitamins, say your prayers, and don't say yeah. Don't say racist maybe, things. Maybe on even tape while maybe you're like your buddy Lesnar, <laughs> Lesnar versus. Well, Hulk see, Hogan. a few years ago, something like that. A few years ago, back back in the day, uh, him and Rock went at it, and it was kind of a passing of the torch, which I think was kind of Hogan's farewell last match type shit f- to the true fans. For me personally, which I see, I'd like to see AJ main event again. I'd like to see him back in title contention, but. The guy I want isn't there, and that's Kenny Omega. I, I wanted to see that match at WrestleMania this year because I thought it could be great. I've seen Cena, AJ, too many times. It's a spot fest. I'm going to be disappointed, but that's where I want to be. Kenny Omega will be there eventually. It's yeah, a matter of time. Not this year. So, Evan, as we close out the podcast, we're going to give our opening thoughts about Sweet Tooth, and it is from who? It's from Tall Grass Brewing Company. Uh, this is a salted caramel Belgian style dark ale. Uh, Holy a, shit, that was a mouthful. Right. It's brewed with salt and brown sugar, similar to, uh, how do you say it? Lagunitas? Lagunitas, Lagunitas brown sugar. Yeah. yeah the, which was a horrible beer. Which was awful. Um, yeah. But, uh, brown sugar is pretty, it's not very good at all. But. Um, I don't hate a lot of beers, but that may be one of them. It's, it's 9.2% alcohol by volume. 9.2, eh? Yeah, and well, I've had this one already, so I'm going to let you two actually go off with whoo, it. Hey, hey, that's a first. Yeah. A beer review for a, an offhand guy. Yeah. It, 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 I it, figure we should change the game on the second one. Change review. the game. Let's change the game. Let that me, uh, smells very... Uh, let me yeah. tell you what you think. I actually, I will tell you immediately that after I had a few drinks of it, I actually liked it. So tell me we'll see. what you think. I can definitely get the uh, the salt and the, and the brown sugar, sugar caramel portion to it. Uh, I would definitely throw this into the line of a dessert beer. Yes, you, it is. You're, you're not going to sit down and order this and have a pizza because uh, it no. wouldn't be pleasant. Or... Or have it with a salad or veggies or anything like that. Like, it, it's one of those where, you I, know uh, what, I want a sweet beer. Mm-hmm. I think it's yeah. a good choice. It, it's smooth. It's I, good taste. Uh, I definitely taste Belgian wheat. For, yes. For sure. For sure it's Belgian wheat. Um, it is darker. I haven't poured it in a glass or anything, but uh, I can hey, imagine. You can see the kind of, the, it's almost amber. It's darker. It's, yeah. it's amber color. Um, the salt and definitely the brown sugar there. The, the caramel is... It's taken a lot from brown sugar rather than caramel. Yeah. Yes. So I... The caramel just tastes like malt to me. Mm. Yeah. It, it, it's just... It has a malty taste to it. The thing that got me was kind of kind of sticking around with drinking it was the aftertaste. Um, I liked the salt and I liked yeah, the brown sugar. Yeah, a little salt aftertaste. And the way it was mm-hmm. done. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. It wasn't like a like brown sugar that we did where it was just this bombardment of of brown sugar and shit and and an over and shit 
Yeah, brown, like, brown sugary shit. <laughs> it was ultra hoppy with brown sugar, yeah, and it, it was, was not good at all. This one, this one, I would definitely uh, agree. I think a lot of people could get behind it and try it, and would enjoy I would, it. I would drink this. Beer fan. I would drink this if I were like if I went to Dairy Queen. No, oh, yeah. And I got like a Sunday or a Blizzard or whatever. Like Th- if this, I got home, this I would, would literally be great it. in a beer float. Yeah, it if would that's be. such a thing, if you could do an there ice cream beer, beer float, this would be good in it because huh. it it doesn't taste like beer. Just like just like a hot slam, like you know. We've had two beers this night or tonight, guys. That we've had more than two. Well, beers, but. yeah, but I'm talking the flavors of them are not. <laughs> Traditionally beer flavored, and I like it. I mean, I don't know if I would buy it to drink on the weekend, but if I had, I don't know, something along the lines, you were having a, a, a party together, and you were having people over, and, you know, you're doing your cheese trays and your different things like that. This is actually you know, really good for someone to try, just yeah. to try. You but know? I, mean, I, if you've but never I mean, had to pair anything. up with something, you know, if I you're having a Christmas this, party or something like that, that'd be cool to throw I would in. give this to bitches if you're trying to get well, them out at the Christmas party. Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, because they would be like, oh my God, it's like that, like that, you know, that like, not your father's, like it's like a root beer, but this is like a, like a sweet no, beer, No, they, they, they would, <laughs> they would make it something, they'd be like, it tastes like a... Like a, a a smoky caramel macchiato from Starbucks. Oh my! Oh my God! You could add it to their Starbucks and get them hammered for no reason. Basic white bitch. Material. And they're like, right "Why there. am I taking my pants off? Uh-oh. This is like ridiculous." Oh, white girl, <laughs> straight up white girl waste. <laughs> that being said, folks, I think that, Evan, I think you got to take us home at this point. We're a, we're an hour and thirty five in, and uh, I don't think it's going to get any better than what it already has at this point. <laughs> Uh, well, real quick, I do want to ask, Matt, have you, do you have any funny stories as far as, like, the liquor store or at Fire Dome that have just been hilarious, like, as far as having to serve someone? Well, a, a quick story, one comes to mind. Uh, one night, someone tried to tip me. They said, you can have either $5 or a 2 milligram clonopin. <laughs> what in the fuck is that? Uh, and I believe it's a pain pill, isn't it? Uh, no, it's, it's kind of like... Um, oh, shoot. It's kind of like Ativan. So it's like okay. people oh, that, that freak is, out a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so like anxiety so, medicine. Yeah, so so people like mess themselves up. They drink a lot and then like they take an Ativan and then like they drink more and then they're like black out for like six hours. Mm, that yes. sounds awesome. Yeah. Anyway, so, apparently it's appropriate to try to tip someone that you don't know <laughs> in a Klonopin. Um Actually, the other night at the liquor store... I was there with ABC Cops. We were watching the Kentucky game, which I will not comment about who won or lost because it's irrelevant. It sure as fuck wasn't Kentucky. It's irrelevant <laughs> completely. I'm from that beautiful state. It's irrelevant. Chop, jock, Jayhawk. Oh, Lord. What anyway. The so, the ABC Cops were there, and they went and uh, they heard some commotion at the drive-thru, and they Might went I, over there. May and, I interject for a moment? No. ABC Cops? ABC cops are the alcohol beverage control. Thank you. Okay. So um, they pretty much just like regulate the sale of alcohol, make sure you card people, make sure everybody has their ID, uh, make sure you don't have any open containers at liquor stores and stuff. Good. So we, we have a drive through at this liquor store, and they heard commotion, went over, investigated. They noticed that a someone who's a regular had an open container in the car, and he asked for their ID. They didn't have it. And he was like, well, why are you driving? He was like, because I don't always need my ID. And he was like, well, you have to have it when you're driving, which is, you know, kind of a law. I don't know if anyone else knows that. Anyway. I I was unaware I needed an ID to drive. He pulled up and they searched his car, found methamphetamine, marijuana, cocaine. He was on parole, didn't have his license, had an open container, and he was drunk. And he was on probation. My name's Dr. Rock, so when I do cocaine, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. You just literally committed like five felonies in the evening to go get a six-pack of Bud Light. Oh, God. You are seriously fucked you know, more than you know anyone the, has ever been fucked You know life. the worst part about that whole story uh, is that he actually was getting two six-packs of Bud Light ponies. The little seven ounces that people drink for no reason and they're more expensive. But well, for the ounces, 
Anyway, yeah, that, that's probably gonna gotta be the best story I have from the liquor store. I mean, there are always like crack addicts and drunks in there just stumbling around <laughs> peeing on the floor and stuff because it's Kentucky people, folks people so. pee on the floor and you're yeah a couple times wow because they, they, they get hammered in, in the beverage barn or at fire dome in the beverage barn because they get drunk and they go there to buy their cheap eight dollar freaking why would you piss in the beverage like listen so granddaddy's whiskey let me nine dollars a freaking fifth let me tell they you do it on accident let i me think tell you. About you think I, I don't really know because I'm I've never gotten so drunk. I've been like, you know what? Yeah, what I can't buy this butt ice. Yeah. Can't buy this butt ice. Here we go, and just start pissing down your leg, and then you just leave. I I'm like, here's my thing. Like back when I lived in Henderson, the beverage bar before us turned into this immaculate liquor. It is. It is the it nicest is and best liquor store in. Henderson, I remember, Kentucky. Yeah, and I I believe it from what you told me in pictures you showed me. Like it's amazing that Henderson has that because yeah, I wouldn't absolutely. expect it. But like my memories from Beverage Barn is you know you can go in there hammered and you can stumble around and get your beer or whatever and you can leave. But I've never heard like just from talking to the other people that worked there before you got there. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of some crazy ass story about someone just like pissing in the middle of the floor. That's fucking ridiculous. Next time you're in there, ask the people who work there if anyone has ever urinated in the floor. And I about, will. About two weeks ago it happened, and uh, we just mopped it up and went about our day. But, I mean, still, I mean, I feel like we're I, right next to the ghetto. I feel like if I asked In the about, ghetto. In the ghetto. <laughs> a little, little bit of Elvis, Elvis Presley for you folks. I feel like if I ask about that, you're going to be like, oh, so you piss in the ghetto. <laughs> yeah. No, so you're just telling, I, maybe just I tell them you know me, and then they'll be like, "Oh wow, he's a celebrity," and then be like, "All right, no, no, you no, are, you are, are like you definitely podcast. piss on the man." <laughs> no, wait, you know Matt, you definitely piss on the floor. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys, I uh, think that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, Matt, again, thank you one for bringing in your twenty dollar hop slam. Irrelevant. I'm just glad to be here. I, I feel bad for drinking it now. I oh no, no. I, I feel like I drank it was gold. delicious. No, it was so good. I'm gonna have another delicious. one once we end. <laughs> yeah, that definitely is gonna happen. I can't feel my face. I can't feel my face when I'm with you. Oh god damn it! <laughs> but I love it. I'm gonna stab you. You know, <laughs> next time we open, do an intro. Seriously, I'm gonna fucking stab you if you do that again. Oh dear God, uh, he has an eye. <laughs> next, next time we do an intro, I think I'm just gonna sing because I think that everyone needs. That's to know a way that. to turn away our fans. No, that's the way you get on American Idol and uh, win. Exactly, because oh, yes. listen, there's a big rendition of me and Zach doing "I Want It That Way" by the Backstreet Boys with a, with wonderful. our fellow three amigo Chris. Yes, Cronin. we'll we'll bring Cronin on for that yes. just to have that intro, but. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, you'll get to hear my beautiful singing next week or maybe the week after. Um, Please check us out on iTunes and on Google Play. If you like what you are hearing, give us a five-star review. Send us a comment. Subscribe. Subscribe. Yes, that is the biggest thing you can do. I wanted to give you guys a little update on something that's pretty exciting on our Facebook page alone, this is without the iTunes and the Google Play popularity that we've gained. iTunes alone, we've had 103 people organically just find our page, uh, just clicking through Facebook and find us, that have found our page and liked it and enjoyed what we're doing. Um, a good portion of it isn't even local, so that's kind of a big deal. That's a huge deal for so, a couple... We we've literally we'll call our fucking roughnecks. Yeah, like we're literally. It's been this will be week three that we've been officially a podcast, and with Google Play being a part of our repertoire now, it's going to only get bigger. Uh, so again, check us out Google Play, iTunes. If you want to shoot us an email, you can hit us up with an email at the main event four five at gmail dot com. If you want to shoot us a Snapchat, there are two ways you can do it. Um, you can do my personal Snapchat, which is Evan T. Wells, or you can do the main events Snapchat, which is on Zach's phone, which is at Our Main Event. Check us out there. Uh, Twitter is still in the works. Uh, work was a little bit busy this week, so I didn't really get a chance to set it up. But that will be done this week, so you'll hit us up on Twitter. Uh, I'll let you guys know all that information 
either on Facebook or you'll hear it on the next episode. Uh, Matt Watson, do you want to give anyone like to hit you up since you're a beer craft connoisseur? Your 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 social yeah. media connoisseur? yeah um uh, actually I work at the beverage bar I'm there uh, during the week and uh, Thursday Friday Saturday I bartend and uh, you can come in. Try some craft beer with me. Mention the podcast. And um, uh, my Instagram is at Matt underscore the underscore Watson. Find me. Send me a message. Talk about the podcast. We can talk beer. We can talk anything. Doesn't matter. Um, But anyway, yeah. Do you want to give any ladies? You are a single man. Do you want to give ladies your Snapchat? And ladies, I want to describe Matt for you real quick. And I'm being entirely serious. You've got this beautiful dark brown hair going on. Beautiful. You've got gorgeous blue eyes that look mm-hmm. like the ocean. God, With this podcast has got really weird. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we're the tag right. we're the tag team champs. I can do it. I want. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> but ladies, if you want to hit this man up, he knows his beer. He can get you drunk, and you can <laughs> have a good time with this man. And enjoy I've, every beer you have. <laughs> I, exactly. I've hung out with this man at at. A couple of different bars. I don't know if you want to go down that road after you not like that description of it. No, no. It's listen, be right. listen. We can friends can talk about friends being good. It's fine. It's oh yeah. See now you're rubbing my shoulders. <laughs> anyway, my Snapchat is Pimp Daddy Maddie. That's spelled with T's instead of D's. <laughs> I I'm 100 percent serious about that. So uh, check out a uh, Pimp Daddy Maddie uh, on Snapchat if you want. Um, again, guys, we thank you all for listening to the show. We have had a lot of really good support over the past couple of weeks. I mean, we're really reaching out organically, like without really ha- even having to do anything. People have just been listening to us, and they've said, okay, like we like the show. We've already got 103 people in two weeks. Yep. Tune in, enjoy, pass the word. Talk about the main event. Share it on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram. Get us out there because here's the thing. It's all a labor of love. We're not getting that fucking nickel from it. We're just enjoying giving you content and hopefully getting a break from your regular everyday shit because that's what it's about. That's what me and Evan wanted to do when we sat down a long time ago is get away from just the normalcy of life, cut up two working class guys with an occasional friend on the podcast to bullshit, drink beer, Talk sports, wrestling, women, cars, movies, whatever the fuck tickle our little fancies, and, and uh, bring it to you guys. Our fancies. <laughs> Generally feathers. What? Feathers. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that carries disease. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Philippines carry disease. You're going there too. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. So again, thanks. Uh, look for us. Uh, subscribe. Thank you again for all the support. We love you guys, uh, Matt. Thank you again for coming on the show. We definitely appreciate it. We're we are for sure going to have to have you on more because you are Do it. you're highly intelligent when it comes to craft beer. Zach, thank you again, my tag team partner. Definitely appreciate it. Um, again, guys, check us out iTunes, Google Play, Facebook. Hit us up on Snapchat. We'll see you next time, guys. Thank you, guys. We you love, love you. You know we mean it. <laughs>